Good evening and welcome to all our visitors and guests. Tonight we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Mass intentions this evening is for the people of our parishes. There will be a second collection taken up today for the restoration and repair of our stained glass windows. Please stand. And shall we join together and sing number 467, Table of Plenty, number 467. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We are children of the light and of the day, vigilant for our Lord's return, for those moments when we have closed our eyes, failing to seek out His light. Let us ask our God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the day star. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of Justice. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you reign with the Father in the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, the King, Almighty God and Father, give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Most high, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father of all that is good, keep us faithful in serving you, for to serve you is our lasting joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying, peace and security, then a sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and a third one, one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. And the one who received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. And the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should not then you have put my money into the bank so that I could have gotten it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. First off, I guess I should reintroduce myself. Hi, I'm Father Bill Kessler. The last few weeks it's been wedding palooza and then I was on retreat the past week, so it's good to be back with you. I know Father Porter took good care of you. I heard he told a couple of good jokes. First off, I think I need to explain to you that when the gospel is talking talents, it's not talking, you know, you know, it's not talking that type of talent. It's a yearly wage. A talent was what was worth a, a, a laborer's yearly wage. And so when the gospel is talking about that, it, it's talking about money, but we can very easily translate it into that idea of gifts and talents, the abilities that we've been given. Certainly, if we listen to that scripture, the scripture that was told to us from Proverbs, what is it doing but extolling the virtues, the talents of a good wife? who first and foremost praises and fears God, gives thanks and praise. When it says fear, it doesn't mean fear, afraid, but it means gives awe, recognizes God as the creator of all. And so a virtuous wife is first and foremost someone who puts God first in her life and then is busy with what is before her. She doesn't worry about great and grand things but looks at the little things before her and makes sure that all is done. Taking care of the duties of household, it's speaking of the spinning of wool so that the people of her household would be clothed. Taking care of the poor, reaching out to those in distress. That is a good wife, recognizing God taking care of family and taking care of those who have no one to take care of themselves. We are the same. Each one of us has been given a chance, a task before us. But sometimes I think we imagine ourselves to do great things. We look at Hollywood and see all that they do. We see the wondrous works that a single person does. I mean, how many of us have stood in line to see a rock concert 
or remember back to the, the days when Evil Knievel would jump over these giant stadiums. We want to see people do these amazing things because we think that's important. And, and I don't want to deny that when these people do these great things, I mean, every time I see a classmate of mine kicking a punt, I say, he's my claim to fame. You know, because I want these great things to happen to me, too. God is great. We offer our awe to God. We are called to do the commonplace, what is right before us. And when we fail to, well, we're like the one who took what the Master had given him and buried it in the sand. Every time we think to ourselves, I can't do anything about it, we take what God has given us and bury it in the sand. Don't make that mistake. Do as the virtuous wife has done, looking right before you and seeing what God has placed before you, not leaving it undone, but applying what God has given you to, given you to do. Each one of us, regardless of ability, has the ability to transform the life of the person before us. If you're not physically able, then pray. If you aren't rich, then work. If you have joy, offer it to those without. Those are the talents that we must build up in our lives, not for our benefit alone, but for the benefit of all those around us. Do not allow yourself to think, someone else will do this, someone better than me will do this. Listen again to the parable of the talents. The one who had five invested himself and made five more. Obviously, he wasn't working in our stock market, but he invested himself and made five more. The one who had two invested himself and made two more. The one who had one, afraid, in fear, buried it and was tossed out. We do not want to be tossed out of God's grace. But every time we close our eyes to his mercy, close our eyes to what he has called us to, we push ourselves further and further from his presence. But when we put ourselves out into the world, as scary as that can be, then we invest ourselves in his life and build up those around us, gaining two or five or many, many more. Let us not be afraid, but let us invest ourselves in the very life that God has given to us, that the world might know the awe of our God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker. As children of the light, we now look to God for our every need. For believers who suffer persecution and for non-believers seeking truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders committed to peace, 
and for citizens bearing the financial burden of war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civilians caught in the midst of war and for family members trying to keep peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those coping with the demands of intimacy and for single people struggling with loneliness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather at this table and for all who are united in spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those from our parish and community serving in the military, that God might watch over and protect them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the evil arising from war, that God in his love for us all might bring about a greater good by their suffering and sacrifices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our parishes for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. God of heaven and earth, we long to see your face. Hold us in your mercy, granting what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we present and prepare our gifts, please join and sing number 551, age to age, number 551.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord God, may the gifts we offer increase our love for you and bring us to eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. By his birth we are reborn, in his suffering we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead we rise to everlasting life. In his return to you in glory we enter into your heavenly kingdom. And so now we join the angels and saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Benedict our Pope, George our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, With hope we pray now as Jesus our brother taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Before we begin the distribution of the body and blood of our Lord, I invite all those who are Catholic and who can receive to come forward, receiving the body and blood of our Lord, responding amen as you do so. But for those who cannot share with us at this table on earth, in the sure and certain hope that one day God will gather us all around his heavenly table, I invite you also to come forward with your arms crossed upon your chest. It be a signal to myself and the other Eucharistic minister to ask God to give you a simple blessing. For this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of our world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. We come to receive the body and blood of Christ. We come to share the Supper of the Lord. Please join in sing number 488, Supper of the Lord.
Let us pray. Father, may we grow in love by the Eucharist which we have celebrated in the memory of our Lord Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. I know it's not for a couple weeks yet, but next Sunday we will be celebrating across the community. Many churches will be gathering with us here at St. Patrick's. Five o'clock next Sunday afternoon. Please know that you're all invited to come and join with us to celebrate as a, as a Christian community that feast of Thanksgiving, that peculiar feast of the United States called Thanksgiving. Five o'clock we would have a prayer service and then follow it up with a potluck, or not a potluck dinner, but a a dinner that's being sponsored by various communities uh, from our various churches from our community over in our parish hall, followed by some entertainment. So if you can, please plan on joining us next Sunday evening at five o'clock. We will also be having a Thanksgiving mass on the vigil uh, Wednesday evening. Times are in the bulletin because my memory is not intact from uh, retreat yet, but please take a look at that. Um, if you cannot join us on Sunday night, then please plan on joining us for that anticipatory celebration of Thanksgiving Wednesday evening. Details are in the bulletin for both of these. The Lord be with you. Awesome. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth in peace and love to serve each other and our Lord. Thanks be to God. We go forth singing number 500, City of God, number 500. SQPN, leading the way in Catholic new media.